Hello, welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This, What Say You? Psalms 33 and verse 4, the A clause says, For the word of the Lord is right. God bless you. I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden, Sr., pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And thank you for joining me for this episode of The Bible Says This, What Say You? I have some things I want to talk to you about today. And I want to talk to you about a, a growing uh, a, a sin, something that's taking place in the body of Christ. And I want to warn you about it, my friends. I want to warn you because the Bible warns us. And the, and the growing sin that's moving seem like it's the latest flavor of the month is the sin of idolatry. We're trying to rebrand, or many are, Christianity where you can be a Christian and be anything else you want to be, appear on any stage that you desire to appear on, do whatever you want, and still be a Christian. But my friends, the truth is, uh, that's not the way it works. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, and by the way, on my next uh, upcoming episode, I have special guests who are going to join me and you are going to be blessed uh, by these, uh, these persons who love Jesus Christ who have, who have been on the world stage. They have been on programs with the likes of Gladys Knight and the Pips. Well, Gladys, uh, 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 Michael Jackson, Barry White, um, uh, Peebo Braxton, Nikki Howard, uh, some of the biggest names in the profession, Gerald Levert, and so many others, and they'll come and tell you all about it. And now they are standing for Jesus Christ, declaring God's truth, uh, actually a part of the upper room. I'm so grateful to have them as a part of the church and been members for quite some time. And this part of their lives, they, they've seldom talked about, if ever. Most are going to be surprised to know that they have, have actually performed with these artists and in these venues because what they talk about when they talk is their relationship with Christ and how glad they are to be in Christ. And they sing here at the church with our sanctuary choir under the direction of the maestro himself, Clarence Rocky Rayford. Uh, they sing with yours truly, and they're just as happy or happier to be singing for Jesus than to be on the world's stage singing for the devil. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. It says, uh, uh, verse 6 says, now these things were for our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. The word play here, this particular passage is a reference to Exodus chapter 33, Exodus chapter 32, excuse me, and verse 6, where the Bible records how Israel <clears throat> backslid when Moses was up on the mountain. And uh, verse 6 says, And they rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and burnt and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. The word play here literally means in worshiping their false gods, they participated in an immoral, in immoral orgies, in fornication, in wickedness. This is how they glorified the false gods uh, that they were glorifying. The calf, as a matter of fact, that Aaron made while Moses was on the mountain, the people fell into idolatry. Now listen to this, my friends. The apostle Paul gives an analogy and he calls upon, upon his readers to be sensible. And I'm going to call upon you today to be sensible, to, to, to use your brain, to think about something. And, and when I talk to you about uh, these things, I'm not really concerned about how you may or may not feel. I think one of the problems in the body of Christ today, we become feelers and not discerners. We become feelers and not 
thinkers. We, we're, we are more emotional today than we are rational. And when you lose the ability uh, to, to discern, when you lose the ability to practice reason, when you lose the ability even to know how to differentiate between how you feel about a thing and what you think about a thing, then you are at a major disadvantage. Now, I'm going to show you why the Apostle Paul called upon the saints to be reasonable, to think, to, to uh, decide, to discern. And it's written here, right here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 14. First, he gives a, a strong command. He says, Wherefore, my dear beloved, flee from idolatry. Now, Corinth was a city given to idols. These Gentiles lived their lives in idolatry. But here, Paul says to the Gentile believers at Corinth, he gives a tierce command. He says, run from idolatry. And in verse 16, well, actually in the 15th verse, he says, I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. That is, I'm talking to reasonable people. I'm speaking to rational believers who know how to think. I'm not, I'm not talking to captain and queen, obvious, but I'm talking to reasonable believers who know how to think and to use reasonable deduction when dealing with a situation. Believers who have the Holy Ghost, believers who have, as John says in 1 John chapter 4, who have an unction from the Holy One. 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 2, he says, you have an unction from the Holy One. That is, you have an anointing from God. And when the Lord has anointed us, he anoints us to be able to think things through. He says this, I speak... As to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? He says here, the cup of blessings, or called the cup of thanksgiving, which was the third cup in the Passover meal. It was the third cup in the Passover meal that our Lord said that this is the, the cup of my blood which is shared for you. As he began to give a new, began to replace the Passover with the communion. He uses the third cup of the Passover meal commonly called the cup of blessings. And he says to the disciples, uh, drink this because this is my blood. So Paul says to reasonable, to the reasonable members of the church at Corinth, he says, this cup of blessings, which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? It's not the blood itself. It's a sacrament. It is the communion of the blood of Christ and the bread uh, which we break. It represents Christ's body. Uh, is it not communion with the body of Christ? In other words, when we share in the communion, this is our way of becoming one with Christ. Christ. Paul says to the saints at the Corinth, do you not agree with me? And of course, they agreed with him. He says, and then he goes back to the Old Testament and to, the, uh, to, to, to Judaism. He says, behold, Israel after the flesh, the Jews by race, are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar, that when they offered sacrifices on the altar to God and those who ate of the sacrifices, were they not one with the altar as they were offering their sacrifices unto God? And I don't want to get out into the hedges, but this says a whole lot about even our offerings. When we give our offerings, we are, we're actually making a statement about uh, how great the Lord is and how good God is and, 
and, and the place that the Lord holds in our lives. But that's another segment for another time. But he says here that when the Jews in the Old Testament in Judaism uh, were partakers of the altar, they were one with the altar. They became one with the sacrifice as they worshiped the God whom the sacrifice was being offered to. All right. He says, what say ye then? Now notice, Paul is like a lawyer. He is calling on them to be, uh, to, to be cerebral, to use their minds, to think. And he says, uh, what say ye then? That the idols, the idols that he warned them against, the idols where he says in verse 14, flee from idolatry, and where he says in verse 7, neither be ye idolaters. He says, the idol is anything. That is, old English here, King James, the idols are nothing. These idols of wood and stone, they're not true gods. They are nothing. The idol is nothing. Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols uh, is anything. It's nothing. The idol doesn't live. The idol is not real. Those false gods aren't real. He says, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, the things that they offer to the idols, they sacrifice to devils. Now there is a power behind that lifeless wooden statue. And that power behind the lifeless wooden statue is demonic powers. It's the power of the devil. Are you listening to me? Now, he says here that the, the idols are nothing, but there is that when you sacrifice, you are sacrificing to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils or demons. So he says, if you Corinthians mix the offering of, uh, of uh, sacrifices to, to false gods, you are mixing devil worship with your Christianity. And Paul says, I cannot have you to mix devil worship with your Christianity. That simply will not work. And my friends, we are trying to mix things with our Christianity. Now I'm running out of time here, but let me say this. He says, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the partakers of the devil's table. One cancels out the other. If we're going to stand and be a witness for Christ, we cannot stand and be a witness for the devil. If we're going to stand and be a witness for the devil, we cannot stand and be a witness for Christ. If we are going to be spiritual and holy, then we cannot at the same time be secular and profane. If we're going to represent the Lord God of the Bible, we cannot then represent praise the Lord, the devil and demon spirits. Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 24, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. But you cannot serve God and mammon. And we are trying to serve God and mammon. And my friends, I'm here to tell you that when you sacrifice, the sacrificing to one eliminates the other. Let me read to you now. It says, and when we do this, why do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? No. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Now, isn't it, isn't, isn't it amazing? The, the theme of the people in Corinth was all things are lawful, which by the way, is the same theme of Satanism. Do what thy will shall be the whole of the law. Do what you want to do. Do what thou wilt. Well, we see that spirit now trying to make its way into the body of Christ. We see flat out wholesale idolatry coming into the church, into 
uh, even the holiness church where we stand on scriptures uh, like come ye out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord and that we're, we're called to be holy. Follow peace. We all talk about it. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. But I'm wondering what's happening to us as I watch television. I see shows like The Voice. Yes, The Voice. And I'm noticing more and more. I hear the contestants uh, when they give their little stories. Many of them are saying now, I was a worship leader at my church or I am a worship leader at my church. Or they are ministers, preachers, apostles, ordained persons who preach the gospel. Now they're coming on the show singing worldly songs just to get the chairs to turn around. My friends, is this a good development for the kingdom? Do we really want to send the message to our young people, to our sons and daughters, to those who, have, who are standing on the faith that this is all right? Will, can the church keep its credibility when we are becoming chameleons rather than standing? We change with the weather and for advantage or a record deal. Is it all right to betray what we believe? Well, we're going to talk about it. Join me for the next uh, segment of the Bible says this, what say you?